चंद्र जय गोर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय प्रीत चंद्र जय गोर भक्त वृंद So we are continuing with our seminar on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yesterday we covered Pancha Tattva and Gaur Nithai. Today we are covering Navadip Dham. Navadip Dham is the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Whenever the avatars appear, they appear in a particular place that becomes sanctified. So as usual, we'll be discussing, and you can ask questions in between. So today we'll be covering the following topics: Navadi Dham, location and nature of the Dham, and the Dham was hidden, but it became revealed. How was it revealed? Then the nine islands, and also Ganga Mai in Navadi. Glories of Navadi Dham, according to Shastra, so many quotes. So, location and nature. So, first of all, the concept of Dham. Dham, one Sanskrit word, that is Sanskrit word. Another word is Tirtha. This has a specific meaning. What is the meaning? Tirtha means a meaning. Now, we take it as something holy. Holy place, holy person also. But Tirth has a particular meaning. In English, translation is F-O-R-D. Four. That is the English translation. What does Tirth mean? Who knows? Dham. Dham is Okay, uh, for example, holy people are Tirthas. Holy places are Tirthas. But Tirtha has a meaning which I'll say now. If you, well, it means to cross. In English also, there's a word ford. Ford means if there's a river, you want to cross the river. So you'll wait for, you'll come to a place where the river is very shallow. And that's called a ford. In English, when you say afford, I can afford, it's easy for me to acquire. So, afford in English means the place where you can cross. So, in Britain, for example, many places are there, Watford, Stratford, because there were cities along the river where you could cross, other side. Okay. So, now in Sanskrit, Tirtha means where we can access the spiritual energy easily. We can access the Supreme Personality of Godhead or His energy, His mercy. Because we are in the material world. Supreme Personality of Godhead is not manifesting. So if we want to access, we have to find some way. Of course, by chanting Hare Krishna, that's a Tirtha. A devotee is a Tirtha. Because he is crossing to the other side, he's chanting Hare Krishna, so he is connecting. But a holy place is a Tirtha because when I go to a holy place, to a Dham, I can easily contact the Supreme Personality of God. So Tirtha is this view. Tirtha is any place, for example, where a particular Leela of Krishna happened, or appearance of the Lord, or even a prominent deity. For example, Sri Rangam in Tamil Nadu. That's the biggest temple in the world. It's, there's a deity there of Ramana, which was worshipped by Lord Brahma, then Ram, it came down Parampara. So that is a Tirtha, because the deity was powerful, it came all the way from Shiv Sagar. It was given by Vishnu personally to Brahma. So that is a Tirtha. So Tirtha can be place, appearance of the Supreme Lord, 
or his Leela or prominent deity like Tirupati example so Navadi Dham is a Tirtha Navadi Dham is not part of this material world as we understand a Dham like Jagannath Puri Mathura, Dwarka Navadri these are not part of the material world this material world has many cities countries places but Navadip is not in this world. However, it looks like it is because I can take a train and go and I pay a ticket. But actually, to come to the dham is something very big. Any dham, if you manage to come, you can understand someone got the mercy. So Navadip, but we are saying first of all, this Navadvip is not part of this material world. You cannot say it's, it's in Bengal, people living there are Bengalis, or Vrindavan, or Jagannath Puri, same thing. However, it's been put somehow in a way that we can easily access. So, it's looking like part of this material world. So, if we are going to speak in those terms, how to go there, so we we'll say that it is in West Bengal, in district of Nadia. Nadia is a district in West Bengal. It's called Nadia because there the Ganga crosses around so much and makes many islands. Dweep, out of which nine are prominent. Navadweep. You can see on the right here. So Nadia is the district of West Bengal. And as we said, Navadweep is eternal. It exists in Vaikuntha. But it comes down when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes. So one who comes to the dham, you can understand he got mercy. He was able to come somehow. Otherwise, um, it may not be possible. As we say, you can't come to the dham by buying a ticket. You have to get the mercy. And some people may say that I came to the dham, I'm here. But actually what we understand is that you can be there, but you, you are not there. It's a different dimension. You have to be in the proper consciousness, proper mood, enter in a humble way through permission of Sri Guru, chanting Hare Krishna, keeping the consciousness low, then we are actually there. Otherwise we can roam around with our physical body, but we are not there. So it's a very subtle point. It's an aspect of bhakti to learn how to go on Parikram, then you have of course Seva Prad, uh, sorry, Dham Prad, that we go there but we do some mistake, then we don't get the full benefit. So this is the concept of Dham. So now having said that, I will say that Navadip is a Dham. Now we understand it's a Dham. Of course, you might have understood some idea. But again, one point is, no one heard of Navadip. Hidden, it's a hidden dham. So Mahaprabhu, we know he was hidden, as we mentioned in the first session, the, the two lessons ago, that before coming to Iskon, very few people heard of Chitani Mahaprabhu. Generally, if outside of Iskon, no one knew. So Mahaprabhu was hidden. So was his dham. Ravadi dham was hidden. It appeared at the creation time. And it was there, it was covered, no one understood. But we got information later on through Shastras like Navadi Dham Mahatmya that different personalities did come. For example, Ramanuj Acharya came, Vishnu Swami, Madhva Acharya, they came, but Mahaprabhu told them to establish a particular doctrine in a particular way. And but he told them that uh, later on you can enter my leela, you can participate, but for now, don't mention about this Dham. So Ramanuja Acharya also came and Mahaprabhu, he got the mercy of Mahaprabhu's feet on his head. And a lot of <coughs> persons from Shri Sambhava are not happy with that. That this is given in our Shastra. Because they don't see him as a Vishnu. But Supreme Personality of God, that's who he is. So Navadip was hidden, no one knows. Even now, no one knows about Navadip. Now I'm speaking, I'm telling you, otherwise no one knew. 
When Mahaprabhu came, that time the dham manifested, people came, but initially, yeah, again, Mahaprabhu was not manifest as Supreme, and so even his dham, people came not thinking it's dham at that time. But he came, he performed his lila, Sankita. He spread the holy name and just by his coming and chanting and dancing and all his associates, the whole planet became sanctified, ready uh, to begin the Sankita movement. When Mahaprabhu left, his dham became covered again. This is actually mentioned in one of the texts which was revealed. <coughs> the Dham Navadi was revealed by a personality known as Srila Bhakti Bhav Thakur, who is in our Sampradaya. <coughs> as we understand from his own writings, he revealed his identity as an eternal servitor of the servants of Radha Krishna in Goloka. He descended in this form, the male form, and he, he wrote a lot of songs and writings glorifying Krishna. Also, he is the first great preacher after the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He sent, at those days, uh, we are talking about 19th century, when British were still ruling, that time, he would give lectures and British people would come and hear. And he sent texts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu outside of India, which are still later ever found. So he is known as the modern preacher of the Bhakti movement. Previously Bhakti was there, all the great Acharyas told him. But in the modern age, Bhakti Thakur made a big effort. He wrote a lot of books, he published and distributed widely so many essays and books. And he did, he had big programs within Navadvi. So, this information of Navadvi was revealed through him. It was a divine revelation. Within his mind, all this came. Yes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Navadvi and went to Puri. Yeah. He stayed there and then he uh, left this abode uh, for his eternal life. Yeah. Right? Okay. But he left Nityanand Prabhu to, uh, in Navadi to look after and to talk with the How did the uh, dham disappear? No, we are talking about when everyone left. Gradually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nityananda was still there. Mm -hmm. Others were still there preaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, even some of the, like, uh, Sachi Mata mm -hmm. and Chitra Mahaprabhu's wife, mm -hmm. Shakti Vishnupriya. She was still there, but we are talking about when he unmanifested and everyone left. Now the Leela is unmanifest, uppercut. Okay. At that time, gradually, it will, we'll see what happens. The Ganga came up, covered everything, but it was predicted, it was written in this Shastra that this will happen. So Ganga came, covered everything, it was supposed to come at a certain date. So what happened? That Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he is a Rishi, a Rishi in the sense we, um, Rishi comes from the word I mentioned in a last time I came in the discussion of Veda just like in English, what is the word for Rishi? we see in, in the newspapers in India when they want to write about Rishi they write seer, the seers, S W E R. actually this is the perfect translation because what does Rishi mean? Rishi comes from the word Drish also from Drish comes Darshan. From Drish comes Drishti. Sight, seeing, all from Drish. Also from Drish comes Rishi. Rishi means seer. So what do they see? They see the Veda. They can do Vyasadeva was a Rishi. Vyasa Rishi, Narayani. They wrote they wrote Smriti because they are on a pure platform, they can see the knowledge. Actually, the knowledge is everywhere, it's here. Where is the Veda? It's here in the Brahman, it's vibrating here in the ether. It's there, but we cannot see. That's our current. We cannot see. 
So, Bhakti Mahat Thakur was a Rishi in the sand. He was a pure uh, devotee. He wrote songs explaining how Krishna is taking the lunch in the world. It's there, Bhog Arati one song. He's explaining the food which Krishna, uh, Krishna took, what he did after he took it, he wrote. And he wrote many things in his bhajans, what happens in Goloka. So, he wrote about Navadhi. The revelation came in his mind. He wrote this book. He saw conversation that took place between Lord Nityananda and Jiva Goswami. Some of you are new, but these personalities are there in our uh, Sampadaya. Lord Nityananda is Balaram's incarnation and, and Jiva Goswami is uh, one of the principal disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who wrote down our foundational philosophy, Gaudiya Sampadaya. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw the conversation that took place between Nityananda and Jiva Goswami. And what happened at that time is that Mahaprabhu was in Puri. Jiva Goswami came to visit Navadvi and Nityananda took him, told him you should go and see all the places of Mahaprabhu's past time. He said, please can you take me? So Nityananda took him and showed him, this is where Mahaprabhu appeared, this is the reason what happened. So he saw that conversation and he wrote it down, everything. So we have information exactly of where Mahaprabhu was household, what he did, where he took bath in the heart, and so many other personalities, where they were living, where Nityananda and Mahaprabhu met. Very great details we have because of uh, revelations by Dr. Nol Thakur. So, all the information is there in this book. And many quotes were revealed. Many quotes from Skanda Purana, Vayu Purana, from the main Shruti, from Upanishads, Chandogya Upanishad, all so many quotes about Navadi. No one knew about it. Actually, no one could know because Krishna covered it by his potency. But, as we mentioned in the first lesson here, that uh, after Bhaktivinoda Thakur, all the, everything became revealed. Slowly people came and started populating this place again. They filled up Navadhi. And this was predicted. All this was predicted. Then gradually the fame of Navadhi increased again. So look, this is now Navadhi Dham Mahatmya. Part of that, it was written in shlokas, two two lines in Bengali, but not this Bengali. It was a very high level of Bengali, which today also people find difficult to understand. So Lord Nityananda said to Jiva Goswami, after Shiva Mahaprabhu's disappearance, Ganga will rise by his desire and cover almost all of Mayapur with her waters. One hundred years after that, she will again manifest Mayapur. That was predicted. That time it happened. Ganga came up. Everyone left. Everything was. Covered. Because the Leela had happened, it happened. But at the proper time, the move, the Samhita movement had to expand and go on, and so at that time it prepared. So then he continues here, chapter 5, text 72 to 73. At that time, only the land of Mayapur will manifest, no houses will remain. It means that 100 years after that, she will again manifest my guru, meaning Ganga will come down and then Navadip will be manifested, uh, revealed. So at that time, Mayapur will be there, but no houses will remain. Thus, that place will remain uninhabited for a long time. Again, when Sri Mahaprabhu strongly desires, people will reside in Mayapur as before. So that was spoken long time back. And one interesting point that even the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Ganga came down, everyone was wondering where was it. So they thought another place far away. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was sitting in his house one day, and he saw a bright light in one place. And he was shocked, it was late at night. So next morning he went where he saw that light. And he asked everyone, what is this place? And the local people, because that is on the border of Bangladesh, even now, there are many Muslims there. They said, this land is useless. We plant everything, but only this plant grows. They pointed at Tulsi. Tulsi grows here. 
We plant rice, tulsi will grow. Anything we plant, tulsi will grow. This land is no use. So at that time, Dr. Thakur understood that the birthplace of Chitani Mahaprabhu is being revealed to him. So he went to bring his guru, his guru is Jagannath Das Babaji. That time over 120 years old, he was just sitting, he could not open his eyes, he could not do anything. He was for a long time not moving at all. But he'll just speak, people will hear. So he carried him in a basket and brought him. And when he arrived there, then it's mentioned, Jagannath Das jumped off the basket and started chanting and dancing very loudly. So there, then Bhakti Thakur understood this is the birthplace of Mahaprabhu, which we were searching. So through him also that place was revealed. So here now the tell the same. Again, later people will reside in Mayapur as before. Now, particularly in Navati Dhamma, yeah, this book, there's a very important shlok which today they are quoting a lot, and you will see the reason. Translation. All these ghats will again be manifest on the bank of the Ganga, and many devotees will come together to construct a huge temple for Sriman Mahaprabhu. This was predicted. And then Lord, he says, one amazing temple will manifest here, Mayapur, where the daily worship of Sri Goranga will constantly increase. Now this is difficult to put in English, but Gorangera Nitya Seva Haive Prakash. Gora Nitya Seva is manifested, means the, the worship of Mahaprabhu will spread far and wide because of this temple. So this temple is being built now. This is in Mayapur, temple of the Vedic planetarium. This is this picture drawn here. When here Nityananda speaking to Jiva on the bank of Ganga, they were in Godrum Dweep across the river. And he was pointing and saying, here a big temple will come. That was hundreds of years ago where he was speaking this. So this is uh, given in Navadi Bhamahatmya 5.74.5 and this is the temple known as Temple of Vedic Planetarium, which ISKCON is building now, and they are writing everywhere that this is the verse which was predicted. And Srila Prabhupada came, he began this construction, he, put the, he did Bhumi Puja. So, pure devotee, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can understand this is the plan being manifested. Yes? Why the manifestation and disappearance and why? Any question is why harm is coming and going. Okay, maybe. And Mahaprabhu also. Krishna's plan is there. Also another thing, you see, oh, we are all jivas in Kaliuga. We have a certain karma. We have certain desires and certain, what would you say, wish, desires and hate, things we hate, repulsions. So Krishna can never force someone to do something, accept something. <coughs> so you can understand that anyone who has bhakti, this is from a past form, mostly, usually. Uh, in some cases what happens, the very powerful Vaishnava will come and give you the Sukriti, just by his sight. Darshanit Pavitra Karo Eintu Mahaguru. This is one bhajan. But generally from past life, Bhagavad Gita says that that Shuchinam Shimatam Yehe Yoga Prashtu Vijayati. From past life, one will attain a certain birth in a either very pious family or spiritual or rich family, so they can finish both. So, your answer to your question is that the jivas that time were not ready or did not want. And jivas had to take birth at that time to begin the mission. They were yet to come. But anyway, we can't understand the Lord's plan. Really. But this is the point also that the movement had to start, the Sankirtan movement. People had to appear, come into place, because a lot of, it's mentioned, a lot of personalities in Sankirtan movement, 
will be devatas coming to help the Lord and propagate it. Srila Prabhupada said that uh, the children being born to the grihasthas who are taking this movement, they will take it very fast. A lot of them will, will be devatas in the sun of the moon. Anyway, answer to your question is that it was not the time really. The time was not there. The jivas had to come, the place had the time had to be set for them. Generally, Kaliyu people are inimical. They don't want to hear about God much or do anything about each other. So that's the answer. So we are speaking of Navadhi. What is the meaning of Navadhi? Nava? Nine islands. Nine. Dweep islands. So Navadhi is a dham with many different places, islands. <coughs> This is a picture. Actually, Navadvip is in Vaikun, spiritual world, eternally. There it's in the shape of a lotus. So each of the lotus forms a, uh, each of the petals contains one of the islands. So here in our uh, manifestation here, Ganga this is Ganga, this is Jalangi, Bhagirati, but actually it's all Ganga. They're tributaries in one way, we accept them as Ganga. So it crosses around like this and forms nine islands. Vishnu likes to decline surrounded by holy rivers. This is mentioned by Shri Prabhupada's Guru. Sri Rangam is uh, again in South India. There, a very prominent deity which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent time. Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent the most time in Navadri, 24 years. Second, Jagannath Puri, 18 years. Third, Sri Rangam. And Sri Rangam, he spent four months. Four months is not long, but everywhere else he spent short time. And when he went there, one of the Goswamis came back with him, Gopal Bhatt, well, not immediately later. One of the six Goswamis, very prominent in our movement, came from a family in Sri Ramam, And the place Mahaprabhu stayed is still there. I visited many times. And the family is still there. It is still there. And the house they demolished where he stayed, but the pieces of the wall are being distributed to different temples. So, in Sri Rangam, Kaveri comes and comes around, it's an island. Actually, it's in a river. Kaveri comes around like this and goes. Also in a place called Shivana Samudra in Karnataka, same thing. Kaveri river goes and crosses around and around like that. So, Vishnu likes to stay in places like that, where his uh, Shakti in the form of the river Worships him. So Navadhi means nine islands. As I said, Ganga goes round and round like that. But you know, Kaliuga effect, of course, Navadhi is there, but Kaliuga effect is there. So now the rivers are not there. But we understand this is one island, this is another one. But Ganga is not there dividing. But uh, the markings are still there, making the nine islands. Navadip is from Vaikuntha, as we said. It descended with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Mahaprabhu um, came, Navadip came, in the shape of a lotus, each of the islands is representing one form of bhakti. We heard about nine forms of bhakti in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's mentioned. Pralat Maharaj prays. And in one Vaishnava bhajan also, bhaja hune mana shiran mana mana, there it's given. There are nine forms of bhakti given in Shiva Bhagavan. First is shravan. How do we perform bhakti? Nine forms are there. One is by hearing about the Supreme Lord, like we are now. By hearing, by kirtan, speaking, glorifying the Lord, or chanting. That is Kirtan. Then Smaran, that we remember Krishna's 
Vigraha, how we remember his Leela, how his devotees, anything connection with him. So that is Smaranam. Vandana. Vandana, praying to the Lord. That is Bhakti. When we come before the Lord and we pray that this is what we want to help me to achieve this and uh, help me to come to you, over, help me to overcome my obstacles to Bhakti, or, or questioning, confiding, praying. Father Sevanam. Father Sevanam, practically this is realized by pilgrimage. If you read Bhag, uh, Shri Bhagavatam, this section, Shri Prabhupada says, Father Sevanam means going on pilgrimage. We must go on pilgrimage. Devotees go to holy places. Also, physically cleaning the temple, cooking, serving, any service in the temple is Father Sevanam. One of the forms of Bhakti. Dasya. Becoming a servant of the Lord. Become a servant. When you become a servant, actually the word is slave. Servant is paid. And he can say, I don't work. I want to go home. But slave of the Lord means we do without question whatever the Lord wants. Even if it's a big inconvenience for us, we just do it. So one has to reach that platform. Otherwise, we see my comfort, what I like, what I don't like to do, but dasya, this is a higher form of worship. Then, archan. Archan means puja, worship. So that is also there. And sakyam, making friendship with the Lord. If you have a friend, you tell them everything. And if something happens, first thing you inform what this happened. What about you? What happened today? So you make friendship with the Lord and reveal everything and confide. These are nine forms of bhakti. Do you miss one? Yeah. Atma Nivedana. Yes, of course. What is the difference between Vandana and Archana? Vandana and Archana. Vandana means just like Vandana means pray, praying to the Lord. You know, revealing your mind, asking, praying and that. Archana means the puja. Agarbati, the do archana, that is, that is form of bhakti. When we worship the Lord with Agarbati, move that uh, panchakriti, uh, complete chain. So, remembering the word without the bhakti is like Vandana? No, Vandana means example. You just come before the Lord and you pray. Pray. Asking that uh, I'm going through so many problems, but you know, just confiding that I'm going through problems, but I think that it's some plan of yours, so it's okay, and I <coughs> want to come to your dham, and there's so many obstacles. I hope to come, and you know, like that. Bring. This is not like smaran. No, no smaran is example that I'm thinking. Govardhan Lila, Krishna did this. He did that. He lifted the mountain, then everyone could see for seven days before they could not, but this time they could, this was his plan. Or I'm thinking of the Vigra, I went to see a deity in Shri in Nandwa, I'm remembering Krishna looked like this, like that. So the Leela, or remembering the form, not speaking, praying, just remembering. Or remembering Bhagavad Gita shlokas, remembering. But you realize to remember you have to hear or read a lot. Otherwise, what will you remember? You come to the lecture here or every day read something, then we remember that. Or coming and seeing the Vigra, seeing different deities, then we can actually remember. Yeah? Atma Nivedana, giving up everything. Okay, don't get afraid. That is a higher form of bhakti. Actually, we can give up everything without giving giving up. Inside. There is someone, you know the chairman of this TOVP? Yes. Who is building the temple? The main disciple of Prabhupada? His name is Amarish Dada. Before was Ford. Uh, he was the grandson of the inventor of the motor car. Henry T. Ford, his grandson. So he took Diksha from Srila Prabhupada. And he is a uh, well, multimillionaire. But he is not. Because he is given it. He didn't give it, he has it, he had the money. But he's just using it for what, in whatever way. To build the temple, and he's, he's, he's the biggest contributor to the temple. 
He can give more also. But the idea is Prabhupada said everyone should contribute, then they'll feel part of it. So Atma Nivedan means we have so many shelters, so many things we take shelter of in our life, which we think this is giving me safety, security, but finally we give up all that and say my shelter is Krishna. My security is Krishna. And as you, some of you may know, that all these are exemplified by certain personalities. Rupa Goswami has written one of our acharyas, Shravanam, who is the role model for this? Parikshit Maharaj. He heard Bhagatam seven days and got pure. Kirtan, Shukadeva Goswami, he spoke and glorified Krishna seven days. He got perfection. Smarana, Pralat Maharaj, he was undergoing so much persecution, but he just kept remembering Krishna and he attained perfection like that. Praying, Akrur. When he was in, um, Krishna was leaving Vrindavan to go to Mathura, your heart prayers. Huh? Actually, many of her prayers. But he's the exemplar. It's given by Rupa Goswami. Offering prayers. Yeah, Dumaj got perfection also like that. Mandana. Father Sevana. Lakshmi Devi. Dasya. Becoming a servant of the Lord. Hanuma. He served the Lord without question, whatever. whatever. Archana is uh, someone called Archana Ananda. He is a Prithu Maharaj. In Srimad Bhagavatam. He was very, he attained perfection. Sakyam, who made friendship with the Lord and attained perfection. Arjun. And Atmani Vedana, who gave up everything. Bali Maharaj. Okay, so these are the nine forms of bhakti. So for Vaishnava, it's very important. And in Navadik Dham, this is again the map, the approximate. Each of the dream is represented by one of the forms. And to increase that form, we can go to that island. Antardweep. Atma Nivedana. Antardweep is where Mahaprabhu appeared. It's at the center of the lotus of Navadi Dham. Simantadweep. Shravanam. Hearing. Godrumdi. Kirtanam. This is very prominent. Because here, which is located here, is Iskon is somewhere there. Then we come down and we come to Bodrum to see the house of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who revealed Navadi Dham. Why is Godrum so important? Well, whole Dham is important. But Godrum, because Kirtanam is very successful here, Bhaktivinoda Thakur made it his preaching headquarters. From here he preached all over Bengal and spread the movement. And before him, Lord Nityananda. When Nityananda came back to preach on Mahaprabhu's order, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, you come back and preach in Bengal. So he made his headquarters here. Because any kirtan or chanting Hare Krishna and him or singing, perfection can come very fast in Bodhi. So Madhya Dvi, Smaran, Kola Dvi, Pada Sevan, Ritu Dvi, Arjuna, Janavi, Vandana, Modadrum, Dasya, Rudradip, Sakya. Somewhere here is Navadip railway station. No, it's called Navadip Dham railway station. IRC. So, it is a mystical, it's something, India is a very special and we can't, we can't understand this. That, uh, so many dhams and links are there to Vaikuntha. The reason is that whoever took birth in India, and this is also taken to mean in Vedic culture, in past lives they were very pious. So they give an opportunity to finish off their bhakti, and it's very simple because they are there. But but some of them then come out and come here. <laughs> and some people here go there, <laughs> seeking Krishna. But uh, Bharat Varsha is so important that even Devatas are glorifying it. 
that we want to take birth in because Ganga is there, Vrindavan is there, Jagannathpur is there, which are there in Vaikuntha, but they cannot access, they're in the material world. But the embassy is here. And just like here, today I went to Indian embassy. They're very careful who they let in. Why? Because you can just enter and claim, I want asylum. Mm -hmm. And they, according to law, they have to take any any country. Because even though this is Tanzania, but the embassy is that country. Mm -hmm. You know that concept. Mm -hmm. huh? What do you call it? Is that name for it? Embassy of Canada is Canada. You, there's no jurisdiction of Tanzania law. Similarly, I, I mentioned that the Navadip station is here. We come by train. But within Navadip, Maya is not acting, Karma is not acting, everything is directly under Krishna. It may seem like as if it's a uh, material world, but it's not. At some point we are entering, we enter into the this world. But again, we have to be in the proper consciousness. So this is the amazing thing about the Dham and particularly Navadi Dham. Navadi Dham, we'll see some quotes now. How it's so amazing. This is showing, uh, Iskon is here, Antaradri. This is Bhagirati, Jalangi, from here it forms Ganga in one way, but in another way we accept this is Ganga because we come here and we take bath and this is Ganga because it's touching, the water is touching all of this so this is river Ganga, you can see Ganga comes here after because Ganga starts in Goma that is the water but the Ganga, the spiritual part, comes from Kailash. After dropping down from space, it hits Lord Shiva's head. And uh, why why does it come on Lord Shiva's head? Because she, when uh, King Bhagira prayed that you please descend, she said, I'll come, but I'll come with such a force that I can smash this planet. How will you break that force? So he requested Lord Shiva on Kailash. So the Ganga comes, passes the upper planetary systems, then comes with a force down and hits Lord Shiva's head because of his strength, his Mahadev. Nothing happens. Then it comes down and joins the water coming home to form Ganga. So some things are mentioned about Ganga. In Navadi Dham, Ganga is there. Ganga is in many towns, but here it's different. There's a temple of Ganga in Mayapur known as Gora Ganga Jagat Pavani. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, we understand that uh, Ganga Devi, many times Mahaprabhu comes, she'll just come up and swell up and touch his feet and come down. Also, now after Iskon was built, every one, two years, Ganga will come up till the feet of the deities. And what to do? Everything had to go on. So the puja went on. If you just attended Mangalarti, water is still here. Some water snakes swimming around. Life goes on. And somehow or other they built the altar so high it's not affected, but the water is touching the feet. Basically Ganga wanted to touch the feet of the deities. So she's a devotee of God. Why do we take bath in Ganga? Why do people take bath? to remove their sins, not us. Removing sins is something in bhakti, it's a side thing. Happiness, moksha, destroying sins, this is side. Highest thing is bhakti. Things which people aspire, they'll come looking for the devotee. They'll come to the devotee. Uh, I forgot the Sanskrit verse, but that Vilgamam Thakur says that uh, that uh, the liberation and mukti, yeah, mukti and destruction of the power, uh, they come as maid servants to serve the devotee. So when we go to Ganga in Mayapur, it's not to destroy our sin, it's to get Gauranga. Because Gauranga, he took bath there. 
he took bath in Ganga. And so his essence is there, his god of prayer is there. So when we go to Mayapur to Navadi, Vaishnavas, Gaudiya Vaishnavas go to Navadi to get the mercy of Gona. And we go to Ganga for the same purpose. We pray to Ganga that you got mercy of Gona. Because she is Shakti of Gona, one of the devotees, consort like Vishnu, uh, Lakshmi Priya, Vishnu Priya. So, because she is a God the mercy, she is a mercy, uh, so she can give us the mercy. So that's why we go. Chaitanya Bhagavat it's mentioned that why does Ganga come so fast in Haridwar and Rishikesh? Have you seen how fast it comes? Very fast. Because she is rushing to come to Mayapur. It's written. To come to Gauradham. She comes very fast. And this is another point. Ganga is very pure. Ganga is actually the taken the foot dust of Vishnu. And in Gita Mahatmya, it's written there that to become pure, Ganga Snana Dine Dine. It's written there to become pure. People take bath in Ganga many times. We go again and take bath. And, uh, but uh, Bhagavad Gita, one time we take bath by reading, we get more purification. Why is this purification here in all of these elements? Because the contact with Vishnu. So, although Ganga Devi passed through Rishikesh, Haridwar, these are all dhams. And she got more, now she is purified, but she passed those hands and became pure. But the purpose is she wanted to come to go, go, uh, go to Dham, Mayapur, and bring all that mercy. And so if you take bath in Ganga, in Navadip, you took bath in all those places. Because it's the last place. After that, she goes to Ganga Sagar. Ganga Sagar means she merges into ocean. The actual real meaning of Ganga Sagar is that she goes down to the low hands to purify. She purifies three worlds. She comes in heavenly planets. She's known as uh, Mandakini, Ganga in heavenly planets. Then Ganga is known as Ganga, then lower planets also. But the point is that whatever is the strength of Ganga in Gordhan, she brings all that sanctity, it's accumulated. But on top of that, Goranga took bath. So if anybody wants to take bath in Ganga, this is the place. We mentioned this point that she used to flood to touch the deity's feet and to come in contact with the devotees. So I mentioned one thing previously, I again repeat that uh, in Brahma Vaivarta Purana, Krishna told Ganga not to dry up because in Kali all rivers dry up. You can see they are not what, how they work. Who's been to Kumbh Mela? Before. Okay. I went to Kumbh Mela in 2007, Kumbh. So where is that tent city? It's in a big area. Yes. And on the side you see there's a huge like mountain there, yes. right on the mountain. So I was trying to figure out why they put the tent city in this valley. So after two, three days walking around, then I went up. I realized this was Ganga. Where it is now was Ganga. Very high, very deep. And if on top of the tent city, there's a bridge with the trains are passing. That was meant to cross the Ganga. So because of Kali Yuga, even Ganga became less, but many rivers dried up all over India. Saraswati is gone, long time ago. Like this, many dried up. So Krishna is telling Ganga in, in Kali Yuga, you don't dry up. Then she said, I don't want to remain because very sinful people come in Kali Yuga. They do all kind of sin. Then they'll come and bath in me and I get all the sin. So he said, no, this Kali Yuga is different. After I leave, after about 5,000 years, my devotees will fill the planet. 
and worship of me will fill the whole place. I descend in a different form, and when these devotees come and take bath, they'll take all the sin and purify it. So this is mentioned. So Ganga stayed because of taking part in Gauranya. So now let's look at it. There are many quotes on Ravani Bhaan. So we'll go to, let's see, Glories of Navadi. Now we'll first look at Navadi Dham Mahatma. Again, Navadi Dham Mahatma is revealed by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, one of our Acharyas. He revealed through a divine revelation all that he, what came to his mind, he wrote. But he could see uh, all the knowledge at that time as a Rishi. So, Many quotes are there, so many I have to pick some of them. In other holy places, offenses are punished, but in other deep offenses are always forgiven. Especially like Vrindavan. Everyone is warned, be careful, Dhamma Pra, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But Navadri go and stay and live and people go so much in Dhamma. But in Dhamma, many reactions come from offenses. It's called Dhamapra, not in Navadi. In Navadi, very, it's there very little, not much. Next, in Navadi, souls who commit hundreds and hundreds of offenses are easily deli delivered by the mercy of Nithari. Again, the concept of Gaudiya Vaishnava, that Krishna said, surrender to me, I'll give you, I'll destroy your knowledge, I'll have these simple activities, I'll give you liberation. But Mahaprabhu is saying, just come, I'll give you. But I'm so sinful, I did this, I did that, I cannot enter the temple, I cannot, you know, I'm so sinful. But in uh, Mahaprabhu, he doesn't see, he does not see your past. If you come, you will get the mercy. Simply if you come, you will get the full mercy. He does not see who is qualified or not. Another quote. Souls who once visit Navadeep are freed from all offenses. Once we enter Navadi, then we, it's uh, mentioned that account is open. Gaurana Gora, Mahaprabhu writes account. Okay. That now everything you do, he'll add it up till you get moksha. Chanting Hare Krishna, attending Sunday program, ISKCON, taking prasad, reading Bhagavad Gita, he opens your account. If you just enter, just come and visit. So Prabhupada, he wanted to build, he built a big set and other thing. Every year they're building new accommodation because it's expanding so much. Prabhupada's idea is simply people should enter another thing and get bhakti, then go back and then their deliverance is guaranteed. It's just a matter of time. You can't understand the good fortune. This dham has come here. Again, it's a secret, no one knows, but it will spread now. Now it will spread. It's mentioned in, within Navadi Dhamma that all of you know so many dhams there in India. Jagannath, Puri, Rameshwaram, Gadrina, so many, all over, you can't count. But try to observe, as Kaliuga increases, they are sort of unmanifesting, they're not like before. They're becoming dirty, and, I mean, this is just the material vision. They're always pure, and at Pralaya, they'll not be destroyed, they'll go back to Vaikuntha. But we are seeing, that it's not like before the people appear in full, so many animals are there and, and thieves and particular dham. So actually it's mentioned now the dham atmya, that as Kali progresses, dhams will unmanifest, rivers will unmanifest, holy rivers will dry up, they refuse. I am not going to purify these people. They are sinning and they are not worshipping God, they want to enjoy more and that's why they want to leave their sins. So the rivers disappear, dhams disappear. But Navati will manifest more and more. And we can just observe. 20 years ago, look at my food. 30 years ago, 10 years ago, every time I go, I see it's bigger, more organized, expanding, more people are coming. Everything's expanding. So Navati will expand. This is the dham for Kali. Other dhams, you can go, but it will not be so accessible. It will be many issues you will be Scriptures say that 
By remembering Navadip, you attain that which pilgrims attain by visiting all other holy places. Simply by discussing and remembering Navadip, so much benefit. That which yogis attain after 10 years in other holy places is attained in three nights in Navadip. All this is spoken by Lord Nityananda <coughs> personally. Lord Nityananda speaking to Jiva Goswami who visited him. And this conversation was captured by Dr. Thakur. He wrote it down. One other quote I did not put here, that in Navadip Dham, by sleeping, at night we sleep, we lie down. We get the benefit of being done over. Anyway, to Krishna. And in Navadip Dham, by just by walking around without any plan, just walking, we get the benefit of being Parikram. Anyhow, even we don't know, even we are tricked to go there. So, somehow we end up. Then Mahaprabhu somehow wants to give the answer. Even people don't know. Another quote was there, if you find come up, I can't remember which ones I put. But somebody who goes to Navadip, even for material motive, gets benefit. But don't do that. <laughs> Go to worship. By spending one night in our deep souls attain that which is gained by residing in the seven principal holy places for 100 years. Main dhams, all listed. Actually, Navadip is a dham where all the dhams are there. Personally, I went to Kurukshetra, Jagannath Puri, Varanasi, they're all within Navadip. In Navadip Dham Mahatmya, that book, it's revealed they where they are. Badrinath is there, Mathura is there. So who's been to Mayapur? One, two. So you remember where Chankazi is buried? That is Mathura. And you know where Jagannath Puri? Rajapur is there. And also Kurukshetra is there. I mean there. Like that, all the dhams are there in hidden. Not so he does not, it's in the book. Okay, now oh, one second, we didn't finish yet. So many quotes are there, I could just not copy paste. So what I did is we just come out and look at uh, Okay, we'll directly read a few of them here. What time do we stop? Nine or, or, or fifty-five? Five to nine. Five to nine. Huh? Nine. Five to nine. Okay, so let's look at some of these quotes. Navadi Dham glorified in scriptures. Hello, Sakukya, in the translation. This is Vayu Purana. The Supreme Personality of God had said, In Kali Yuga, I will descend as a son of Shachi Dev. On the bank of the Ganga, in the populated land of Navadhi, I will appear in the home of a respectable Brahmana at the, and at the inauguration of Sankhi. Even the word is here, Navadhi. Dvijakula Shreshtha, Bhavishami. So, you can see how these shlokas were hidden. That there were so many pundits. There were people living in Navadhi. No one saw it. But after Mahaprabhu left, it was revealed. This is from Skanda Purana. Those who worship me in Kali Yuga while residing in Mayapur will be freed from all sinful reactions, will achieve the supreme destination. Know that all holy places, places which separately reside in other people are one million times more glorious in Kali Yuga. In Kali, the power increases of Brahma. Just as metal in touch with a touch stone increases its value, the glory of the Tita grows when it is in touch with the one of Agni Purana. He will appear in a golden form as a peaceful soul with a long neck surrounded by living eyes. Lamba Kantascha Goragascha Garuda Purana. In Kali Yuga, saintly persons will give up living in other holy places and will live in Vrindavan or the land of Navadhi. We have seen that now. But still the popularity is not much. As it increases, now there's whole cities come up in Mahayam. There's one whole area, they made a, what's it called, Gaur Nagar, Gaur Grams. Yeah, the whole areas are there, people are living. They just somehow get in mercy. Against Kanda Purana, Mayapur is directly Maya. 
who increases their attractiveness. By the way, Maya has different meanings. One is mercy, one is illusion, and one is energy. So, this is mercy. Mayapur is directly Maya, who increases everyone's happiness. The glories of that city, which destroys all sins, are narrated in Garga Samhita. This page. Burhad Brahma Yamala Tantra. Gora Hari lives in Navadi to destroy the sins of Kaliuga, wears a flower garland on his neck, shining golden earrings, decorating his cheeks, his arms are decorated with armlets and bracelets inlaid with divine gems. He distributes the holy names of Hari, which destroys all sins, to the devotees. I worship that Gora Sundra. So in Sanskrit, just notice one thing here. This is written in present tense. He distributes. Because the pastime Leela is going on. But it's upper time. In the dark age of Kaliuga in Mayapur within Jambudri, the Supreme Personality of Godhead will perform Kirtan with his associates. He will take birth in the house of a Brahma. One more line. Kurukshetra, this is from Mukti Sankalini Tantra. Kurukshetra is the Tirtha of Satya Yuga. Pushkar for Treta Yuga. Naimisharanya for Dwapar Yuga. And Navadi for Kali Yuga. Brahma Yamala. Or else I will descend in the form of my devotee in Kali Yuga. At the beginning of the age of Sankirtan on the earth in Mayapur. Sankirtan Agami, beginning the Sankirtan movement. The son of Shachi Devi will appear in the holy land of Navadvi. Punya Kshetre Navadvi Te Bhavishyati Shachi Sutta Bhava. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Navadvi Dham ki jai.